Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Wolverine movie thoughts. So I suppose I will start with Yeah, let's let's start with the beginning, really. Cause that's chronologically appropriate. I love the opening of this film. I really, really like that literally the first thing we see, we, we don't even get like, you know, Japan, Nagasaki, 1940-something. I, I don't even remember the exact year. It's just, you know, the camera pans. I, I was literally sitting in my seat going, it's the Nagasaki thing. We, yeah, this is definitely the Nagasaki thing. And it does so well at just, just very... It establishes where we are, what situation Logan is in, You're hanging there with, with the claws, and all these prisoners, and all the prisoners get cut loose by Yoshida, and including Wolverine. And then Yoshida is about to commit suicide, Wolverine jumps in, you know, saves him, you're better off down there, and, you know, heals. I think maybe he heals a little bit too fast. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, and I will say, I, I feel that them having him down a well makes it more acceptable that, you know, that Wolverine is nuke-proof, as I believe Jim Johns put it. I, yeah, otherwise it would maybe be a little bit... We might be nuking the French territory, if, if not. And he wakes up from that, and it's like, oh phew, it was just, you know, now, now we're in, and we hear a voice, and we're like, is that Jean Grey? That's Jean Grey! Is this, oh, right, right, this is, this is like taking place before the end of X2, and yeah, okay, okay, they, they got together at some point, okay, fine. But then she says, you know I can't stay. And it's like, oh. And like the end of it is like, it's too late. And he looks down and the claws and the blood is pouring out. And then he wakes up. And then we're like, okay, now we're in the real world, right? And that starts that really effective element of the film where Logan wakes up and we're like, what exactly is going on? Where, uh, where is Wolverine and or is, is this really real? Is this, you know, and, and without it ever becoming like that cheap horror gag of, oh, it was just a dream so we can have scary stuff with any, without any consequences because that's easier to write. This is always Gene Yes, there are a few different things that we find out in these first scenes. Jean is luring him into death and tormenting him for what he has done, what he is. I, I really like, too, that the first time he's about to enter into violence, when, when he's about to fight off these bar guys, he's like, sorry, Jean. And then he goes for it, you know. I really wish that that had remained an element through the rest of the film, that he wouldn't jump to violence so so suddenly and so, so easily, that it would maybe take more out of him, that there would be sort of a, you know, I wish I hadn't had to do that kind of thing. But but anyway, it, it establishes that very well, and Frank Janssen plays this beautifully. I, I am on record as hating the way she's portrayed in Taken, in the first Taken movie, where she is the bitchy ex-wife, 
which is just intolerable. Okay, divorces suck, and nobody... The, the divorces that get messy are a horrible thing to have to live through. I've never lived through one myself, but I have witnessed others, other people's divorces, you know, with binoculars and popcorn. It's a horrible thing, and I hate when people, when stories are like, oh, but this is the bad guy in the, no, no, look. Divorces bring out, it is one of the situations that bring out the worst in people, both people. It's, it's, I've had relationships, okay, there's, there's no, okay, relationships do, do exist where one person is definitively the bad guy, but there are also a lot of relationships, and I maybe argue that it's even the norm, where both people can get sucky at times. And, yeah, I, I really resent when people, here she has to play this character, which, or character, this, this echo of a character, where she is very, she, she tortures him, you know, she says some things to him that are horrible, but we never come to, like, hate her, we never find ourselves, it, 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 the last, the last couple of lines he has to her are perfect, you know. I had to, Jean, you were killing people, but I will always, I will always love you. It, I, I probably messed up the order there, but what I'm saying is, that's always present. We never feel like she is just this horrible thing in, for, for Logan. There was, there is always this echo of the love that they share. Which is, of course, why she's put into lingerie all the time. It, actually, that, that wasn't too gratuitous. Viper, that's where it got gratuitous. I, I love that Viper actually had, like, two different outfits. I guess they just really wanted to milk this, you know, toy thing for what it was worth. You know, make two different figures for the... Why did she change into... The, they're so... They resemble each other so much. It's like the freaking Riddler in Batman Forever. You know, let's okay. A scene has gone by. Let me change into a different outfit. Actually, the Riddlers were actually you know, much more elaborate and more more creative, more different from each other. But anyway, yeah, I I really love the way they did what they did with Jean here. I feel that's the the best way to do. I thought that maybe it would be like, it, you know, the, the you read about it online, it's like, oh, the movie has extended flashbacks. Ah, maybe that's where Jean fits in, but the only time we see her in this is as this echo, this, this nightmare. And we, this is, this is the movie where we get into what exactly is it like to live as Logan, a man who wakes up soaking in sweat, with his claws out, thinking he has to stab something, you know, every night, which is what we see. We see that character in X-Men 1 and 2. This is the movie where we get to see what he's really going through, why it's, it's like, or more of why it's, it's quite like that. And the other thing that is really great that's set up here is Yashida, where Yashida is just about to commit the, the ritual suicide. I'll probably mess up which one it is, so I'm gonna go with it's either Harry Carey or Seppuku. And yes, he is, he is sort of... He's not sure if he should... It's, it's difficult to, to, you know, commit suicide. It's not something you just do. And at the end of it, he is almost doing it. He, he literally would have done it if not for Wolverine saving him. And then we have this... Uh, yes, yeah, so before I go more into that, let me just briefly skip to the end. Skip to the end. And what, what 
the first time we see Yeshida, he is risking his life to save the life of others. Or well, risking his life. I suppose he could not run the nuke anyway, but he's saving other people, or trying to anyway, with the you know, prisoners of war. And the last time we see him, he is sacrificing other people, including people that he cares deeply about, including Harada, if I recall correctly, but the, the third act kind of blends together in a... but, but anyway, yeah. To save his own life. He, he goes completely to the other end of the spectrum. The, the, the character does, and that is really great. That's, that's what the idea of immortality does. And the other thing is, yes, yeah, so, so going back to when he gets rescued, he, he didn't think it, you know, when you, when you place yourself in that mindset, when you imagine you're told you're going to die from a nuke, that, you know, what, what, that was a B-29, buddy. What they just dropped, you can't outrun. Yeah, he had fantastic lines in this movie. I, I love the bit in the bar. I, I, I don't think I should talk about the bit in the bar because I'd just be going over every single scene, but one of my standout favorite moments was the, you know, alcohol drinking part of this shot and then down in this open stab wound on the poison there. I'm not, I, I swear, I'm not gonna, keep me to it. Do not let me talk about the bar scene. Anyway, yeah, so, so, Yashida goes from thinking he's going to die from a nuke, to resigning himself to committing ritual suicide, to die with his honor intact, facing his death like a good samurai, that's a good little samurai, to being saved. He never, he did not expect that this could at all be done. This was, he, he gets saved from a nuke and he looks up and he sees this man just destroyed and, and he heals. And then we find out over the course of it, you know, he's told Mariko, you know, these, these fairy tales about the you 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 I'm just gonna go with the the yun because I'm pretty sure those three letters were in the you reason the thing that they say means animal. He's been telling her these fairy tales about the yun that saved him and that would keep that that always protected him when he slept and that would protect her while she sleeps. It, you know, and that's one of the good setup and payoff things where, you know, later we find out he really was obsessed with this kind of idea. And over the years, he's, he's just, he does not want to face his own mortality because he's seen that there's another way. And I already mentioned that, you know, divorces are one of these things that may bring out divorce in people. Fear of death is another. And Yashida, I, I love the line, I buried my grandfather. That, that is perfect. And then she stabs him again. That's, that's absolutely perfect. Because it's, it's, it's really spot on. You, you are not my grandfather. My grandfather died when, he's, when he decided to be willing to kill someone. To live on. And, and not in a, any kind of self-defense thing, just kill someone else so he could live on. It's, it's maybe the paragon of selfishness, in a way, to, to decide that somebody else should not live because you yourself don't want to die. It, you know, and, and to be fair, he does, you know, he does start on offering Wolverine, you know. He doesn't, he doesn't trick him into it at first. He offers him at first, we can offer you a death. And, and I really love that, is, is, you know, you're offering me to die? Well, no, not right away. I, that line is so potentially silly. I, I was just like sitting there almost MST3K'ing, 
we, we can have something arranged. I mean, I have some machines. Have you ever watched the Saw movies? We, we have ways. No, it's, it's that thing of, no, you will have a normal life. You, you will go, you will have a family, and you will die a normal, natural death years from now. That, that was perfect. That was very alluring. And, and it's, that's one thing, I, I'm not 100% certain that I understood why, why he didn't say yes. I, I get that sort of, it's, it's necessary for the plot for him to say no, but I didn't fully follow Wolverine's reasoning for, for saying no. But anyway, yeah, yeah, it's just, Yashida gets warped from this, this idea of immortality and the, 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 he, he goes from, you know, a life with no end, has no purpose, to, to which I'm not sure I'd go that far, but I will definitely say that the other, the, the extreme he ends up at, which is a life with no end is the only way for a life to have purpose. That is definitely completely wrong. Life with end has tremendous purpose. It means you have to live life. You have to make the most of life. The idea, I'm not going to get into the, the atheist thing in this video, but the idea that we, we will never cease to live, that, yeah, it, it just, I, I don't see why you would really want to, it, it, the, the idea that life is finite means you have to make your mark, you have to make the most of it, you have to change all that you can, be the change you want to be in the world, and other Gandhi quotes. And the, and, and the theme of integrity also, that, that this, which I've already gotten a little into where Yashia changes from, yeah, being willing to, you know, cut himself open, which is always a nice thing to offer other people, to uh, th those drill bits going into the claws, yeah, that and the shedding of the skin, thank you for the nightmare fuel, it, it was quite rich movie, <laughs> yeah, you, you can tell that Aronofsky worked on this film, the, the, uh, yeah, He, he goes from being willing to commit suicide, to die honorably, to being willing to kill others so he can just live. And the, the other, other ways that the, this theme of integrity, Harada refuses to serve him at the end. He's like, no, master. This is, you know, that's where you kind of realize, oh, that is Yashida, which I personally think there are problems with the Silver Samurai in this movie, but I do think that they should have told us about the time when he started attacking Wolverine rather than afterwards that it's Yashida. I feel that the fight would have had much more of an impact if it was revealed before. Now, but, but yes, Yashida is, you know, the Black Clan has served my family for what was seven centuries or something, and suddenly Harada says no. It it's it, because he realizes that the man he calls master is not the man he once was, and that that brings up this thing of when is it okay to say no to the person you're following? And and in this particular story, that is an authoritarian leader. But really, let's let's just go with. I I brought up Gandhi. When do you you know I Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. These are idols of mine. When you know that's something that I have to work out have had to work out for myself. When do I say that thing that Gandhi or MLK 
said is is not something I'm going to follow. You know, it, it's it's something we all have to determine when when do we when do we follow and when do we not? When, you know, integrity also to yourself, not only to your cause and the leaders of your cause, but also to yourself to you. When, when you have to stop yourself from doing something that means you can't look yourself in the mirror anymore. And that, yeah, I, I love the themes of the movie and how they're dealt with. I suppose I should talk about the Viper. Oh my, the Viper. Like I said, I really, like I said in the review, I like the writing of the character. I genuinely do. I really love the, the nihilism and the, I really, I'm going to take just one jab at the, or, or stab, I suppose, to be appropriate at Man of Steel. I'm really happy that she didn't go, you know, I'm the product of evolution or some crap like that. She's, you know, I, although I suppose, to be fair, her saying I'm a capitalist is maybe just a tad, maybe more than a tad, inappropriate, you know. But, but this thing of nihilism, you know, to be fair to my more conservative brethren, but the, this nihilism thing, she clearly, you know, that thing of Harada, oh Harada, if only you could make me feel anything. You know, she's sort of, there's, there's um, a genuine psychopathic thing going on there. She, she is just trying to, yeah, to, to, to feel something and, and her nature of, of using poison to kill others whilst at the same time being immune to poison herself is something that would lead to this nihilistic approach. You know, you, you would become detached from, from what, is, what you are doing like that. And the, the thing where she said, you know, I am immune to the poison that is all man. Uh, you know, she, she, she feels detached from humanity. And that was really quite compelling. I wish that she had not been... I, I feel like it's, it's really muddied with her allegiance there near the end. You know, at first, it's like... Oh, oh, she's working for Yashida, she's trying to heal him, and she's going to do a lot for Yashida, and then she's working with Harada, who we then find out is working for Yashida, and I guess at the end of the day, she really doesn't switch sides at all, I, I suppose, because she never does support Shingen. So, so yeah, at, at the end of the day, it's just, what exactly was, did she stand to gain? I, I apologize if I just missed the line where she explains it, but it just, I don't really see why. I get why she's toying with Logan, because there is this thing of, I am the one who kills. He is the one who never dies. Okay, let me, let me see if I can... Let's, let's see what I can do to him. There's, there's that thing of Tom, the, the snake-like thing. I, I, I nearly lost it when she hissed, though. That, that really was too far. That was Saturday morning cartoon material right there. But other than that, the snake-like stuff, the, the fight where, you know, she sheds her skin and she's all bold. The shedding of the skin really d did nothing but boldify her, really, when, when you stop thinking. I was expecting her to have the, the Sama Hayek d d d dust to dawn, from dust to dawn thing going on, you know, really looking snake-like, but the mannerisms are great, the way she, you know, moves her head and she gets, you know, the, I think it's Yukio fighting her, she charges at her and she just, at this last moment, just ducks out of the way that, that kind of, and, and then, you know, suddenly attacks with this sort of, I mean, you could suddenly attack, is the kind of, it sounds like, well, that's just every action, you know, of course she suddenly attacks, but there is still some, something snake likes to specifically hurt, you know, Wolverine also suddenly attacks, but when Viper attacks, I also like that they mixed it up, she basically 
every time she kills someone with it, it, it looks slightly different, at least, you know, the, she, she kisses, I get, yeah, she kisses Logan in that dream, which is really just him, you know, I guess it's the tea that she put that little, you know, it's, Am I the only one who thought that that was like, you know, the bug from Matrix, you know, you got a bug in you, and we got a, you know, in this car, and okay, we got it, you know, throw it out the window. That kind of thing was, was very much like the, the yeah, I guess they, they got a little bit more subtle with it. They didn't want to, you know, put, to, to mesh Wolverine's mouth together, and belly button rip him in order to put the bug inside. But anyway, yeah, she kisses Logan, there's there's that one guy who she like, you know, the tongue comes down and what was it, she like licks, she, she does this thing of like licking her, the the tip of her nail with, with I think it's Yukio maybe, and, and she, yeah, she breathes poison, it, you know, poisonous fumes. They mix it up a nice amount. I, I really like that. And that tongue really was the stuff of freaking nightmares. Now, the... I, I feel like if Viper hadn't been a huge part of the plot, if she hadn't worked directly for Yoshida, the movie would have made more sense. Like, if this... It would have worked... That would have worked better if it was a comic. But if this was in a comic, and Logan gets in a fight, and one of the people he fights turns out to be Viper. He only realizes that after she scratches him, and she disappears, or he kills her, something. Then he goes to Japan, and within a day or two, he stops healing. And then we have this thing of, you know, Yashida realizes, oh, maybe I could take his you know, his healing power. The, f the fact that Viper is working for Yoshida really complicates matters. Okay, so, she poisons him so that he will heal slower. And then, he doesn't just get captured by them and taken to that big fortress from the end of the movie and then they just, you know, cut off the claws and the thing. I love that she lures him to get out the claws as well. It's it's very it's very Black Widow y with this thing of you know getting all close to him and, and you think that it's that she's just giving in to her like the the Black Widow thing I I mean that it's all a trick that part you know you you think that it's just her giving in to her desire she just wants to be the cat dangling the mouse in front of her before she eats it. And he's like getting more and more enraged, and finally he gets out the claws, and he's like, I'm gonna kill you. You know, I, I guess that's one of the only times in the movie he goes, he gets the berserker rage going, and she's like, oh, good, the claws are, well, we can begin. It's, it's fantastic. It's just like, Logan, you and your rage issues, you really, sometimes you are a little too easy, dude. <laughs> It's, it's just, yeah, and, and then, you know, the tachyon blade get, gets going, and, you know, oh, right, hold it with two hands like a samurai. And th that wasn't too bad. That, that was a, a decent enough thing, and then it's, yeah, yeah, anyway, the, the thing of, yeah, why, why didn't they capture her, why, why didn't they capture him right away when they knew that, you know, the, when they actually capture him, it's, after he gets the poison out, you know, he does the running of the ninjas, I guess, and that was a, a great bit as well. I just wish that it hadn't been so basically pointless, because at the end of the day, he ends up where he was going anyway. It's not like a... Yeah, it's, an, it's not like a first act kind of, oh, he's almost there, but then he just didn't quite make it, and he has to go back and, and, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it essentially doesn't amount to anything, but I like that, again, it's, it's poison that ends it. I, I like the theme of poison, or you know, toxic substances with, especially with bow and arrow, with Logan in this movie, you know, it starts with the bear thing, and 
the, the, the by the way, I I made fun of it a little bit in the review. I do love the whole bear thing. I really, really thought that Logan's, you know, it's like, you know, this hunter didn't have the stones. I'm talking about the bar scene again. I swear it will only take a second. Did not have the cojones to actually track him and put the bear out of its misery. You know, that was perfect. At, at first it was like, oh, Wolverine's an animal, these are hunters, obviously they're the bad guys, but then, you know, it's only because they actually completely did, the, yeah, you know, and, and the, the poison drove the bear insane. I'm getting close to the, the, the bars. I love the first, like, 20 minutes of this movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go over every single detail. I, I freaking love it. Anyway, and and the first two-thirds of the movie, you think that th that Mariko is the one who has to be protected, but then at the end, it's just, nope, wait, it was all about Logan. And again, I, I get that it was not Yashida just sending someone out to attack Mariko. That was Shingen, and... Ouroboros, or whatever he was, I know that's not his name, the, the Minister of Justice, the, the Beardo guy with the, the, the hookers. Huh, I didn't know there was a pool back there, I love that bit. The, how many words was that? Nine. Well, you got one word left. Is that how we're playing? Yeah, that, that was perfect. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, I get that those were the two who sent people after Mariko because Mariko was going to be inheriting the company and this whole thing. But that does bring up, why was she the one inheriting the company? They, they bring up that plot point and then promptly drop it at the end. With it. There's that thing of, you know, oh, your grandfather talked about how sometimes genes skip a generation. So, you know, he saw himself in you. So that's why he wants her to be the... I just, I don't really see it. Why does, why does he even fake his own death necessarily? Again, why doesn't he just, once, once Logan says no, you know, he, he could just wink to Viper. Once Logan is asleep, she, you know, poisons him, grabs him, they do the surgery, presto. There's, there's not really a necessity of, yeah, I just, I don't see it. I don't really see why Mariko needed to be the one inheriting the company and why the whole the whole thing with Shingen is it turns out to be just a distraction. And that's I hate to say it, but I feel like you could pretty much take Mariko out of the movie and it wouldn't change a tremendous amount. It would change big things, definitely. I do love that Mariko and Logan become each other's reason to embrace what they felt was a curse. Her, as director of the company, where at the end, she, you know, she gives that interview, I will make sure this company earns profits, but I will do something good for the, you know, for society as well. You know, that's just, my lib heart is breaking. She, she is just fantastic. And him, you know, I'm a soldier. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going out to seek a honorable death, and by that, it's basically, I can't die, so I can risk myself a lot to save good people, to do good for people, you know, and I love the way he finally accepts his, you know, the, his killing of Jean. With, with those lines. That, yeah, that was, that was perfect. By the way, I saw like some people were like saying, you know, oh wait, is, is that him, you know, just accept, you know, is, is that his inner demons having been fought off once and for all? Or is that, you know, Gene becoming White Phoenix? Okay, I, I don't have any problem with the Phoenix Saga, but this, no, this is not that. This is, this is, she is an echo of, there was also like people saying, oh, did, did she imprint a part of, look, this is just, I get these are mutants, but this is really not necessary for the, the, the drama here. This is just a man haunted by something he did. You don't need superpowers to, to go into all that. 
No, I don't think she's the White Phoenix, and no, I really don't think it was that she imprinted a part of herself onto him. None of that is necessary, and it would really just muddy matters up. I, I personally feel like this is... This, this should probably be just about the last thing they do with Jean. I don't think that... You know, they, they completely botched the whole Phoenix saga film adaptation, so I, th I think they should just let that, yeah, just let that, let that die, and, you know, hope that we fans forget. And with this, they, they wrap up the relationship between her and Logan. Anyway, if you took away Mariko, other than this, you know, I also love how they treat the romantic relationship between them. It is, you know, it's not some big kind of slutty, there's not a gratuitous sex thing. It's just, we see them fall in love. There's, no, you have to tie it like a real samurai. And it's, you're just like, oh, this is not going to end. She's going to touch his belt tying area, his, his, his midsection right there. and. Nothing is gonna come. Okay, yeah, come on. We know where this is headed, and yeah, it's they they are in bed together, and yeah, it's it. I feel like they did that really well, and the I and also when he wakes up and he's like, you know, I have to fight some, and she wakes up, he's still got the claws out, and she's like, you know, my father told told me stories about you, you know, or grandfather told me stories about you, you know, and he also he sees. The, the silver samurai coming to attack and this whole thing, you know. I also really like how... That was something... I watched this with a friend and we got to talking. Logan needs someone who can, you know, stare him in the eyes and not back down. That those are the people that he really shares something excuse me, with, and it's often women, because other men are kind of threatened by him, and they feel like, you know, he's an alpha male, and, it, yeah, he's going, he's basically going to assert himself over. That's, that's why the thing with the bear at the beginning works, you know, they, they're marking their territory, and they're not messing with each other, and that's, that's, that's maybe the best thing you can hope for between two alpha males, basically, you know, where, with, with strong women, you know, Yukio is like, no, you're gonna take this bath. You know why? Because I got a knife. You know, and Mariko is like, well, you got your claws out. Well, those were nice. You know, I've been told stories about you. The dude could tear her throat out in a second if that was really what he wanted. And she's just like caressing the the weapon. It, it, yeah, and and Jean, again, strong female character and one who faced him and was like, well, I'm not afraid of you, you know, it, he's like, you know, in the first movie, you know, I'm, I'm sorry if, if I hurt you, and, and she's like, mm -hmm, whatever, you know, is, is not any kind of, you know, whatever, get in the machine, I, we got work to do here, and the, but, but, but yeah, basically, if you took away Mariko, and this whole thing of, you know, Mariko has to be protected by Logan, the plot would get a lot less... Yeah, it's basically that the, the third act undoes a lot of the sense that the first two acts made. It's, it should probably have remained about Mariko or never been about Mariko. I'd say that's the, the, the big problem there. Now, the... I, I quite like that, you know, again, we have Wolverine boarding a train to catch up with a, a young woman that he's protecting who's run away. You know, it's, it's kind of like, he's, well, well, there's a train, there's the goat. This is my place in these movies, I gotta go to, the, yeah. And... <laughs> Just when you thought Wolverine couldn't get more badass, he performs a manual bypass. And and like the, the big thing in that scene is like, oh, crap, I can't see. 
Could somebody move the scanner back? Okay, I know you two are fighting to the death. It's nice and dramatic. I'm holding my heart here. Could you please move the scanner back? This is kind of... I, this this is not easy, you know. Could you could you just yeah, yeah? I love the some some of the I mentioned the review the the irony over this his bad attitude. I love the thing with you know he he wakes up and he's had the bullets dug out and it's like oh so so he's a doctor. Basically, he's a veterinary student, <laughs> and he's like oh okay, thank you. And the other guy's like oh. Okay. Okay, 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 and, and Mario goes like, oh, you may have stabbed him a couple of times while he was working on you. He's, he's basically an animal, and yeah, if, you, if you're messing with an animal, if you're causing an animal pain, it's going to fight back. It doesn't stop and think, oh, wait, it just hurts, so it can, you know, if it, it has to, you know, no pain, no gain, that, that kind of thing, you know, yeah. Now, the... I am going to say something I don't say often. I apologize to Stephen Somers. I thought that the scene in G.I. Joe where a ninja takes out a guard who could clearly see that people, the, the enemy was there, was bad, but I realized that this movie took that to, to a whole new, a whole new level. When the ninjas are taking out the Yakuza at Shingen's place, half of those people could have seen any of the ninjas. They're like, oh, huh, a ninja running around up on that roof, oh, you know, and, and like, half of those people should have been like, alarm, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, wow, that was, wow. I suppose that more or less, I quite like the way that, the, you know, we have this, Harada is established early on as, you know, he's, he's really good with a bow and arrow, and, you know, then, then there's Viper's line, you know, there's the line about the, the black clan who's protected Yoshida. I don't think he actually says, and then they stopped, you know, or they used to protect. He just says they, they had protect for, you know. And the Viper's line, could, did your men find? I think he says, d doesn't she say him? So she's indicating Logan, I guess. But, yeah, anyway. I guess hinting that Logan's really the important thing, but... Yeah, I, I refer to my earlier statements about the, the, is it Mariko or is it Logan there? Yeah. Now, with all of that, we still don't completely put together, oh, he's a ninja. He's, he's the leader of these ninjas who, who serve Yoshida still, you know, it, yeah, that, that was quite nicely, subtly established. Now... I suppose I... Yeah, the, the I, I like the relationship between Mariko and Harada, that there was this, again, this thing of, like I said in the review, these, these people talking to each other and we find out about their relationship. You know, we, we find out about the relationship between Harada and Mariko from Logan and Mariko talking, and then near the end, she's like, you know, it's, we have this thing of these people used to mean the world to each other, and now he's, you know, abducting her, and they're, they're arguing, and she ends up stabbing him in the leg, which immediately makes him realize this is wrong. You know, if, if, if you are being attacked by someone close to you, or you feel that they are in the wrong, you should grab a knife and stab them in the leg. That is the, the universal way to communicate that particular message. But, but yes, I, I like the various character relationships. And, and again, there we have the, the theme of integrity. You know, he, he loves her, but he serves Yashida. 
and then when he gets stabbed. Yeah. Okay, so I've just made fun of it, but yeah, basically he realizes this is really doing wrong by her. So am I really doing right? This is the, you know, I, I love this woman and she is so certain that this is wrong that, you know, yeah. I think that pretty much covers... But yeah, yeah, I suppose briefly about the villain thing, like I said in the review, it's the short review anyway, you don't really have a clear idea of who is the villain here. I, I guess Viper is a somewhat consistent villain. We never really see her as anything other than a villain. We never really have an idea of, oh, she's just, you know, she's fine. But who's, why is she exactly working for Yoshida? She's not the one with something to really gain here, particularly. She's kind of just playing. She's toying with Logan and toying with people's fates. And that basically is fine, but at the end of the day, there, it's, it's just kind of unmotivated that she... I feel like there should have been an endgame for her. Not just, you know, what, what does she get out of making Yoshida invulnerable? You know, is she just gonna get that done and then move on to some other plaything? Yeah, I... Or it, even if that was the case, then that should have been more firmly established. Now, the... I suppose... The... Yes, and, and Yoshida... Okay, so at the very end, we kind of see him as the villain, but that's the very end. That's like the last half hour, maybe, you're like, oh, Yoshida was the villain. Uh, right, Yoshida, who died half an hour into the movie. Ah, Shingen wasn't really the villain. He, he looked like it, but really, he was trying to keep the company afloat when Yoshida was ruining it. And, you know, him, the, the forced marriage, that was to make sure they still had some political power. It, you know, it's again, it's decent enough as this sort of Lostian twist of things aren't the way that they appear at first, but it doesn't really amount to anything. And again, we have this character who we think is a villain or the villain, and he's not. And Harada is not the villain. <sighs> yeah, at the end of the day, it's just... It's too unclear. I don't have a problem with things not being black and white, but at the end of the day, the, the action kind of stuff in this movie is at home in a black and white world. There, there's not, you know, when, when Wolverine is fighting Yakuza on the bullet train and setting new records for bad attitude on, in cinema, we're not thinking, but is it right for him to fight these Yakuza? For, in fact, are these Yakuza not merely acting in their own cogent self-interest? Is that not merely the... the yeah, you, you can do that, but that was not what this movie was doing. This movie just... It, it kind of had a wheel of villains and... Every couple of twists, they would make sure to, to do, do a, a round and whatever it landed on, oh, that's now the villain. And this other guy who was the villain before, let's just see what the card, what the envelope says. Nope, he wasn't really the villain because, you see, the actual villain was merely setting him up to be the villain. Well, that's compelling stuff. We'll be right back after these messages. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.